in this last video on current, I'll do a couple of somewhat off the wall examples, or at least different from what we've been looking at so far. So we have a capacitor, has charge Q, plates separated by distance D. It's got a dielectric with a dielectric constant K and a resistivity rho. Now granted that resistivity is probably quite high, but nevertheless, it's not infinite. And the question is, what's the leakage current to the dielectric? So there's an E field that's established across the plates because of the charge separation and current is volts over resistance. We'll start with that. That's our answer. Probably what jumps right out at you is that voltage is electric field times distance. So now we're a little closer. We can do better than that. The electric field is sigma over epsilon. So we have sigma over epsilon d over r. But sigma, surface charge density, is charge over area and resistance is rho L over A. So let's expand this out. Now we have a whole bunch of stuff to contend with. Oh, but the A's cancel. And the distance across here, that's the D. That's cool. But what's this L? Well, L is the length of the resistive, the, the material that you're traveling through. And that actually is d the same thing so those are actually the same value so they divide out and we have q over epsilon rho but epsilon is related to the dielectric constant with epsilon zero so we have our answer current is q over k epsilon zero rho well let's try a more challenging problem we got a truncated cone resistivity rho, height h, and resistances changing from R1 all the way down to R2. We're going to determine the resistance of the cone from one end to the other end. Sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? Well, it'd be so easy if we only had a constant radius. R is equal to rho L over A. We start with that. And if that cross-sectional area stayed constant we could just call it pi r squared and be done but we can't do it so easily because we have to vary the radius so we're going to slice this thing up into an infinite number of thin little disks and each disk from top to bottom is going to have resistance dr which is rho l over a l is dx a is pi r squared. Obviously, r is changing. <clears throat> so it's going to be a challenge for us to figure out what r is. Well, let's do it. So here we have not the same angle of cone, but it doesn't matter. Illustrative purposes here. Here's r1. So I'm looking at from here outward this way. There's r1. And at the bottom, we have r2, just to show a huge difference. <clears throat> and some intermediate value r. Okay. Now, we go from 0 to h along x. I'm going to call this, well, like in the original problem. Here's x. So here it is. And we go from 0 to h. That's the region across which r is diminishing. So at some r, we have this y. Now, this y is what has to be subtract off from r1. If you think about it, here's r1. Subtract off y, and we get r. So the value of R then is R1 minus Y. That's how we're going to set that up. Well, so we have to generalize this a little more. At the end, we just have R1 minus R2. OK, so we're going to have to integrate along from 0 to H along, along X. Now, Y is proportional to X. This thing, this Y that we're going to subtract off from R1. So that's proportional to x. And so now let's start looking at this you know, triangle here of y and x. Well, that's a pretty simple relationship, actually. y is equal to mx, that's all. And m equals 
rise over run. Well, the rise is r1 minus r2, and the run, the delta x, is h. So m is r1 minus r2 over h. And so r now is r1 minus y, where y is mx. And so there's minus mx. So there's our value of r in terms of r1, in terms of r2, h, and x. Well, that was a lot of the work to sort through the complexity. Now let's just do the, do the problem. So resistance is rho over pi. Those are constants. And then we got to integrate dx over r squared. We're going to do it from 0 to h. So there it is. And that is r, which is r1 minus r1 minus r2 over h times x quantity squared. So there's our kind of complexity in this problem. Well, let's simplify it down a little bit by substituting something in for this nastiness here. And so that would be alpha that I'll choose. So rho over pi, integral from 0 to h dx over r1 minus alpha x quantity squared. And alpha is r1 minus r2 over h. Okay, so here's our result so far again, where we substitute for alpha. I'm sorry, substitute for r1 and r2 and h, call it alpha. So r1 minus alpha x squared, I'm gonna, we'll just make that to the negative two power since it's, it was in the denominator. And when we integrate that, the negative two becomes negative one, divide by another negative and the negatives go away. We get this result. And now to the negative one, it becomes an inverse. And since we're putting zero in for x, then we also have minus one over our one. Okay, so we have all this, but recognizing that alpha is still a little more complex and it shows up twice. We're not done yet, are we? However, we can rearrange that <coughs> as r1 minus alpha h. We just multiply both sides, solve for r2. We get this, and there's r2 then. So rho over pi a, 1 over r2 minus 1 over r1. So we can multiply this by r1 over r1 minus this r2 over r2. And that simplifies just a little bit more. Now, alpha, there it is, times this whole mess. But now this mess simplifies because we have some cancellation. And we're left with our answer. And I'm sure you'll agree that was just an absolute blast. And after all that work, you know, R is equal to rho L over A. Well, that'd be rho H, that's the length, over A, pi R squared. Well, pi, how about the geometric mean? So we might have been able to just guess that in the first place and not do all that work, but then you would have been deprived of such an enjoyable calculation process. So that will conclude our discussion on current. And now we have to enter into our next segment, which is going to be on Kirchhoff laws and doing some circuit analysis.